Discovering the unseen and getting our kicks on Route 66. We're checking out one man's jokes beyond the grave, Oklahoma's part on the historical Route 66, and we are killing it with a little murder mystery. Let's journey west for Off the Beaten Path. Welcome to Comoco Cemetery in Granite, Oklahoma, for the first stop off the beaten path where all these headstones are actually fake, yet people are still dying to get in. Originally created for a veterinarian clinic located in Wichita Falls, Texas, this cemetery is a collection of fake tombstones. There are more than 15 headstones fenced in the cemetery, and they all have epitaphs that range from silly to the goofy to the groan inducing. Insert dad joke here. Now the headstones weren't always here. They started out in front of Dan and Eleanor Roberts home in Texas and eventually moved here in 2006. This certainly puts it in perspective. You should never take your life for granted. Now we move down the mother road where you can view Route 66 through your very own eyes. We drove down the road a little bit to Elk City to the National Route 66 Museum, where you get to immerse yourself in a time when things were a little bit different. We have four museums here on the complex. Building number two, it is the 66 Museum. The Transportation Museum was the first building. We have the Old Town Museum, which has antiques and history on the bottom floor, and rodeo memorabilia on the top floor. And then across the street to the north is the farming ranch and the blacksmith shop. We've added lots of different things. The education building across the street, this is art. That's one of our new additions. And then we have the general store is a new addition that's all been set up. So we just keep adding on, making it bigger and bigger and better. This museum has everything from artifacts to antique cars to rare historical documents. And they all capture the spirit of one of the most famous roads in the U.S. of A. You can walk through eight different states that are located on this road and take a peek outside because there is a giant Kachina doll named Miss Myrtle just chilling. All right, enough hanging around here. Let's move on down the Mother Road to Clinton where there's another museum. That's right, it's Museum Mania. kicks on the last museum, the Oklahoma Route 66 Museum will definitely knock your socks off. Our museum is the largest museum dedicated to the complete history of Route 66 from Chicago to Santa Monica, California. That actually tells the history in a correct manner by the decades from the inception of the road in the 1920s through the end of the road in the 1970s. I think a lot of people here in America have great memories of Route 66 and perhaps even traveling in it when they were younger. This Route 66 Museum is the state's official museum for Route 66 and it's operated by the Oklahoma Historical Society. Some of the cool features here are rooms that have legendary music to fit a certain decade, the world's largest curio cabinet, and you can take a trip down Main Street America. And if you're feeling nostalgic, take a seat at a 1950s diner. Our thirst for knowledge isn't done just yet. This next stop will take you out of this world, literally. Can I get something to drink? Waitress, hello? Hello, waitress. From the dawn of aviation to modern day space travel, the Stafford Air and Space Museum in Weatherford has it all. And we're about to check it out right now. Built in 1993, Stafford Air and Space Museum is named after the iconic astronaut, Lieutenant General Thomas P. Stafford, who is a Weatherford native. Here you can see everything from actual flight suits worn in space, 
flight ready engines, historical collections, and so much more. Fun fact, this museum is an affiliate of the Smithsonian. No wonder it's so cool. There are over 3,500 artifacts on display and even an early aviation section you can walk through. The latest edition came in 2020, and let me tell you, it's surely a sight to see. First of all, I'd like to go to the early aviation. In that uh, exhibit, we have a piece of the right flyer, fabric, left wing, and uh, shattered prop. That's important first flight, right? But it also is important as the fact that Neil Armstrong donated that to us here at the museum. We have an F-117 stealth fighter. That's our new, new edition. Um, that's, that was a, uh, quite the project getting it in and uh, setting it up. And then we also have a one-to-one -one lunar module back here that is the most authentic replica out there. I would say the main ones for sure, obviously I love the Wright Flyer wing and Shattered Prop just for its importance and the, the artifact is just so important. I mean it's first flight, first boots on the moon, but we also have some one-offs that you can only see here. We have an F1 engine and an NK33 engine and both of those were the powering the race to the moon. One from the Soviet side, one from the American, but the same problem and two totally different approaches. We have lunar modules, we have a lot of flown artifacts. Um, Really, I think you got to see it all. There's no need to call Houston because there's no problems here. But for our next stop off the beaten path, we're calling all true crime lovers. It's going to take some undercover work to solve this mystery. No need to hide under the covers for this next one because this happened more than 100 years ago when it was an unincorporated land. And this bridge was the scene of a murder. Dead Woman's Crossing was named after the tragic disappearance of a young mother who got mixed up with the wrong people. Katie DeWitt James and her 14-month-old baby boarded a train to visit their cousins, but they never made it. Instead, she debarked the train in Weatherford with a prostitute named Fanny Norton, and her life ended merely hours later. According to the story, Fanny and Katie went for a ride near Deer Creek, but when they returned, Katie was nowhere in sight. About a month later, a fisherman and his son found the body of Katie underneath a wooden wagon crossing, and it was concluded that Fanny unalived Katie. The original wooden bridge is no longer here. It was replaced more than 80 years ago with this concrete one, but it's still referred to as Dead Woman's Crossing. Our last stop off the beaten path, we're going to a historic gas station, because we need to fill up. <laughs> Imagine, 50 years ago, you're cruising down Route 66. You gotta fill up for some gas. It was affordable back then, but where do you go? There's only one place, Lucille's. Here is a classic and historic gas station located, you guessed it, on Route 66. Lucille's historic highway gas station is the only two-story gas station left in the Sooner State. It was built in 1929 by Carl Dittmore and later taken over by the Hammonds family in 1941. Lucille Hammond ran the business for 60 years until the day she died in the year 2000. As you can see, the gas station's no longer in service, but to help keep the memories alive in Weatherford, there's a restaurant by the name Lucille's, right on Route 66. There's so many great places to experience in our wonderful state where the extraordinary becomes ordinary. But don't worry, we have so many more places to explore off the beaten path. Stay tuned for what's next. Out of the way!